Hi! Welcome to Lego The Hobbit. This is episode one, free play, all the mini kits, treasures, and the uh, blacksmith recipe. It's called The Greatest Kingdom in Middle-earth. We're doing free play, and we're going to start with Erebor. Now for this, you will want to have done Necromancer, which is practically the end of story mode, and realistically you may as well finish story mode before you replay. You're going to need Saruman, who's available at Rivendell, and any one of Sau Sauron, Sauron, uh, the Witch King, or the Barrow White to deal with Morgul blades, uh, Morgul blocks, like the black stuff that people go yeah, and run away from. Anyway, the first treasure is just around the back of the throne by a little blue coin. I've also got the times 2 multiplier, that's super easy to get, I'll link it at the end. But use someone with a flail, there we go, to uh, grab the Jester's Staff out of that chest with gold hook on the back. There we are, that's treasure number one, and that makes people laugh when you hit them. I then spent a bit of time trying to hit this guy, making him laugh, but it, you know, it didn't really work. Uh, then a dirty, dirty cut here uh, for the first mini kit. This one took me a while to find, it was the last one I got. There are five owls, I guess, or birds, or something in here. Uh, the first two are right by the entrance. Uh, the s third one is there, literally halfway down uh, on the second dwarf statue. And then the fourth and the fifth are on the final dwarf statue there. Four, boop, and five. Boop. And there's mini kit number one. Uh, from there, plug on through the level. Um, I tend to use wizards just because they can do their explodey attack and trash everything. Um, I've cut little bits of this out, but for the most part I'll just show how I went through the level. Because at least it gives you some context. Anyway, through here, loads to smash up down here, and nothing much to do until you hit the mithril plate at the end. And even with a times two stud multiplier, you can get, and you can pick that up super early on, you don't need anyone special for it. Well, an elf, but you'll have an elf by then anyway. Anyway, head down here, blow up this mithril block with Saruman. Um, or the fire bow, if you've got it, the fireworks bow, and that's treasure number two, which lights up dark areas, which is great, and also perform the hammer smash. Hurrah, hammer smash. Uh, so it's kind of a twofer, although any wizard can obviously light up dark areas, but it's good for free play if you don't have a wizard and you're still in story mode. Anyway, carry on through here, smash that with the rock. Uh, Gloin, I think it's Gloin, will chuck down some meats, <laughs> which the dwarves will happily eat. Uh, and again, just using the explodey tactic to get all the coins here. I think I mentioned even with the times two, you can get uh, 400, 450k off this level, which is pretty significant, and it'll give you a good boost. Anyway, cut ahead to here, what you want to do is trash that uh, stuff around there. That'll spit out something you can build which will allow you to make a fire. Now to do fires you can pick Sam, he's available from almost the beginning of the game. So you can drop him in at free play anytime. Set fire to that, it'll collapse, and there's mini kit number two. Uh, then send Saruman up there to smash all that for some more delicious coins. Not much else to do in here apart from uh, pick up the bits and pieces. Uh, I'm using my treasure that I just got to whack that, hurrah! And then jumping up to pull both levers. There's one and two. There we go, and through the door into here. Now we've got uh, two mini kits in here. Three, in fact. Uh, one's going to need an elf, one's going to need uh, the Barrow White or Sauron or whoever. And one's going to need a hammer, which is fine. And in fact, you may have picked up the hammer one in story mode. It's pretty easy to get. Um, that is the first of five things you've got to smash up, but I didn't do it completely, so we'll come back to it in a second. There we go. Okay, number one mini kit is, or number three, I should say, is over here. You're going to need a hammer. Uh, I'm just using the glowing hammer that I grabbed earlier. And in there's mini kit number three. And again, you've probably grabbed that one in story mode if you like poking around the corners. Then head over to the right and grab an elf and shoot these two targets here. That will drop this, which can't be smashed, sadly, but the chest can. Uh, to get close to the chest, you're going to need, as I said, Sauron the Witch King or the Barrow White, but head in there for mini kit number four. Then grab an elf character again, and there's these things to smash up. Each of them take two hits. You may have noticed I got the first one with Sauron earlier. There's one and two just up there. Uh, it's going to need another hit. Sorry, it's just behind the text explaining what's going on, but there it is there. There's number two. Number three is more or less up where you climb up to ride the crank, which you actually don't need to do in story mode. Number four is the other side of the door there. Uh, so there, that's it. And there we go again. Boop and boop. That's three. Dunk and four, which just appeared behind the text, but hopefully you saw where that was. This text is kind of in a bad place, right? Maybe I should move it to the next video. Anyway, there's number five over there on the left, so dink that, and that will be your fifth 
mini kit there. Hurrah! It's possible you'll have two mini kits here as well. There's an easy one to pick up in the chase. Anyway, then go craft the key. You should have more than enough stuff if you've been smashing stuff merrily like I do. Uh, go for a bit of crafting. Hurrah! And then head through this door. Now you're going to be in this room here. This train thing on the right I thought was the final mini kit before I found it in the first room on the dwarf statues. You should have Master Burger if you've got times two. If not, as long as you smash everything, you're going to do fine. I'll point out a few nice purple coins. Anyway, unlock this dude, James Nesbitt. I forget what his name is in the... There's so many dwarves. I forget them all. I also went mining for a bit of copper because I actually find it quite rare out in the field. Um, so it's always good to have some of that. And this is a great mission just to go mining for bits because the next section... Um, in the dragon room gets you a lot of stuff. Anyway, over here, smash this up and you'll reveal a place where you can dig. Sam or uh, the other guy with the spade will do well. You've also got the mithril mithril, mithril spade, mithril trowel, whatever it is, which you can pick up really early on just with a fishing rod. You can do that in story mode with Bilbo. But uh, dig up, um, then build that, spin it round, and mini kit number six will come up off that winch there. Then we're going to drop down here for treasure number three. You're going to need a wizard to light up the dark area. Fear the scary monster. Oh no, it's just a hat. <laughs> and there's a purple coin there as well. So grab that and that's treasure number three. That's the miner's hat. So I yeah, just must smash everything up. But that lights up dark places. A lot of these are weird. Like you need someone who can light up dark places to get a treasure that lights up dark places. Anyway, the miner's hat is used in a treasure miner's heirloom. Uh, in a quest, Miner's heirloom for a mithril brick. We'll have a look at that at the end. Also in here is the blacksmith recipe. That's up here at the top, and we'll get around to that in a second. You're going to need an elf for that. Here. There we go. One and two arrows there, which will create a jumping, swinging thing. There we go. Jump, jump, and jump again. There's another purple coin. And smash that a bit, and it'll drop the blacksmith recipe, which is the mithril mirror armor. So by now you should have six mini kits, uh, one blacksmith recipe, and three treasures. Anyway, not much else to do in here. I smashed those. Uh, I thought maybe if you hit the train something will happen, but that's where I figured the last mini kit was, but it wasn't. Anyway, drop down here. Um, I tried a couple of times, but you can only seem to mine. I oh, yeah, build that thing. I'm gonna skip it because it's boring. You can only mine three things down here, and then it gives you the doodad, um, the arcan stone, or I don't know whatever it's called. Uh, even if you switch characters, the fourth one you hit will give you the Arkenstone there, so that's your cutscene. Anyway, you'll come through to this section, where you need to smash everything up. Uh, just carry your way along here, uh, you'll see the Silver Mithril, Mithril Great, um, here at the end on the right. And for that again, you're going to need Saruman, or the Fireworks Bow, or the Bomb Blade. If there are other characters that can destroy Mithril Bricks, I'd love to know who they are, but Saruman seemed like the easiest option. He's available pretty much after Troll Horde. You just go back to... Um, there we go, smoosh. So blow that up and there's a mini kit in there. That's going to be mini kit number seven. Um, he's available pretty much immediately, um, but I want to save his video until I've got the other ways of getting Mithril Bricks, i.e. the Bomb Blade and the Fire Bow. And I like the way it gives the fireworks bow at the end of the story mission as a little reward, in case you haven't found anyone else to do it. Because um, you can get it without doing free play pretty easily. Anyway, plug on through here and then immediately you're going to see this blue thing. I think it would have been cooler if it had just shattered into water to put those flames out, but no, apparently it just rolls over them. Because that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, there's mini kit number eight there as soon as you smash that up. Then plug on through here. Uh, if you're still in need of some cash, there are two purple bricks down here. So head towards the foreground. There we are, one, two, and that's another 20 grand or 40 if you've got times two studs. You can smash up all these things, all the fire and everything else for additional coins if you want to. I'm still shy of 1.5 million that I need for my level four or my times four multiplier, so I apologize for making you watch me farm all the money, but I've sped it up, so hopefully it's not too painful. And it means I can blather nonsense at you the entire time. <laughs> Doesn't it make you happy? Anyway, here is a really good place to farm for um, gold and red stuff and green stuff and blue stuff. That's a bit of a tricky jump, but you want to get an axe guy onto that platform. Watch out for dying. Uh, but use that in there and then run on in and you'll find mini kit number nine there. And then plug on through. 
there's not much else to do. You can get a bit of height and shoot these things here with the elf. Um, I always use the lady elf, I don't know why. Uh, you can also unlock Lindir pretty early on if you need an elf before you unlock them in the story mode. Uh, she's at 30 grand and she'll come out right by where you finish up a mission. Anyway, pull this down with Mr. Flail. Dory? I think it's Dory. Even though I've got the Mithril Flail uh, from previously, but I'll cover that also. Uh, build your way across here then. Uh, Smaug will smash that and it'll tell you to use the golden hook, but ignore that for the time being and jump back into the right. You'll come here, pull out Ori uh, and smash that once with his catapult and that'll build this path over here. You'll see another purple coin there, or two purple coins, sorry, and then a fishing rod position. So switch to Bilbo, or use the Mithril fishing rod if you've got it. Go fishing, push it late for a little coin bonus, and there's treasure number four, the Sad Song Shield. I think it's called the Sad Song Shield. Well, we'll have a look now. A shield of song plays a sad tune, and it is quite a lamenting song. Anyway, carry on through here, uh, jump across there, don't forget to latch the other guy on, I forgot, and then had to go back, but I'm not going to make you watch that because that's painful. Uh, so I'll just pretend that it happened there. Now, before you run ahead, there's two more purple coins there, so don't immediately charge down or the run scene will start there. Anyway, uh, I've sped this bit up, just stick to the middle uh, and you will get the final mini kit. You've probably got it already because it goes through a door where you're kind of being um, funneled in anyway. But there it is, there's the last mini kit. So that's four treasures, ten mini kits, and a mithril uh, blacksmith recipe for mithril mirror armor. And now don't go away just yet, we'll have a look at where to drop these off. And there's the shield of song, the mining hat, that's the quest item, the glowing hammer not used in a quest, and the jester's cane. And the blacksmith design mithril mirror armor, as I said, plus the mini kit. Boom, 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 and then a dirty cut for the ninth one. <laughs> I'm not even sure what that is, some sort of mining cart on a sledge. I think. I don't really know. You'll get 50 grand for that, 100 grand if you've got the times 2 multiplier up. Hurrah! And you should then have all four, I want to say, maybe three mini kits. Uh, three, no, it's four, right? Yeah, four mithril thingies from that. Anyway, head to the blacksmith, forge your mithril mirror armor. You're going to need five mithril bricks, ten blue things, twenty square things, uh, twenty of those little blocky things, and twenty iron. I also recommend strongly that you finish story mode because at the end of story mode you'll find a uh, loot generator where you can basically buy loot that you need rather than having to go look for it. I've jumped the gun a little bit here, I'm doing this as soon as I finish the necromancer, but I'm going to go and finish the story mode now so that I can just buy loot as soon as I've got the times 4 multiplier. Anyway, once you've built the mithril mirror armor it deflects uh, projectile attacks. Kind of interesting, I guess, not that essential. Uh, what we're going to do before you leave Bree and drop off the miner's armor, uh, head this way into the inn. Here you can do it um, at daytime, I think you can probably do it at night as well, honestly I'm not sure. But head in there and around here follow the gold coin trail, again called Miner's Heirloom, and speak to this fellow. He'll eventually witter on and go, oh look, a hat, but uh and give you a mithril brick for your efforts. There we go. Now head all the way over to Lake Town, and again you'll have unlocked Lake Town, there's no way you can't have done to unlock the Barrow White. Uh, no harm in armour, and this is a great one, this is a tracked studs, which is just going to make life so much easier. Also the times 2 stud multiplier is just going to save you having to replay levels again and again to get Master Builder, it just gives you such a margin of error, um, it's great. Anyway, head over here, just follow the gold studs after you've travelled to Lake Town. Um, he'll have a look at the Mithril Armour and go, that's amazing. And it's Joel, I forget his name, Joel Gray. It's only 175,000 too, I like it a lot. Uh, here it is. You've got to be quite close to get studs, but if you activate the mighty, mighty stud attractor all the way down here, it'll actually get them from quite far away. And this makes just snagging purple coins, even if you haven't unlocked stuff, super, super easy. Anyway, that's it for now. That's quite a long one, 13, nearly 14 minutes. Uh, on the left is uh, the Mithril Spade, um, which is just pretty useful to grab early on if you're poking around in free play. And on the right is, oh no sorry, on the right is the Spade, on the left is the times 2 Stud Multiplier, and again you can grab that super easily from about halfway through the game and it's worth grabbing almost immediately. Anyway, that's it for now, see you in the next one, bye!